we have a new Disney Plus series, and all five episodes have dropped. And of course, it is Echo. Stay tuned for our full coverage of this season. We're going to have to give us some time to watch all five episodes. But tonight, we're just going to give a quick spoiler-free reaction to the first episode. So, JD, what did you think? Okay, spoiler-free. So, let's see. Uh, I saw the whole thing, watched it all yesterday, all five episodes. And uh, didn't stick the landing, man. Feels like Chapek era MCU to me. And it kind of is, right? The ripple effects of Iger's return won't be seen for probably until Deadpool or after that. But yeah, I I was super excited, man. Really, really excited. Kingpin's back. The continuation of this Daredevil series. It's been so long since that series was on Netflix, and I was just so stoked. But um, I'll say I loved episode one. Episode one was fantastic. I'd watch that again. I'd watch it three times. But the show kind of, you know, didn't meet expectations. That's all I'll say. Dave? Host is muted. Wow. First two minutes. That's a five dollar penalty. Um I so yeah, I watched the first couple episodes. Um the premiere I thought was it was dope. It was like the premiere was pretty much everything I was hoping for because we got news that there'd be a cameo in there and it landed for me. It it was just a great first episode. It felt like the Netflix Daredevil vibes to it. Um a lot of the sequences from it, the the tone. Um and I'm really liking Maya Lopez. Um so I thought the premiere itself landed great. Um, looking forward to finishing it. A little nervous from, you know, JD's not reception to it because we do agree very much so on the Netflix series. So, uh, but I'm still going in optimistic. So yeah, I, I, premiere was great. Yeah, I agree. I really enjoyed the first episode. I don't love a show starting with a flashback. I feel like let's kind of get things mm-hmm. going forward first and maybe do like a flashback episode in two or three. But um, so. Don't spoil Daredevil for me, but I know Kingpin comes back, but don't like, don't tell me when or how, but does he kind of end that show with a little bit of power back? No, 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 I would, okay. I would say no. Okay. To that, to that direct question from season three, the, the, the end of the Netflix Daredevil series. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. So he does, he in between Daredevil and Hawkeye. He must kind of get some. He's been moving property back, yeah, yeah. That's a cloudy I do gap like... of time. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, it came, <laughs> came up out of nowhere. <laughs> I like. I do like the you know a girl goes down a dark path like her father before her. It is kind of Star Wars ish where she's looking for revenge too, but and then she kind of starts off kind of iffy, you know, but then kind of fully buys into this Wilson Wilson Fisk bad guy side, and mm-hmm. but then you know she obviously falls out of it in Hawkeye because Hawkeye tells her the truth about what happened to her father right but i do and i also like that ancient mayan culture that they're throwing in there it's it's uh very ominous in this first episode i have no idea how it's gonna tie in or because she doesn't have powers does she i don't know man there's a supernatural element to it that i did not expect i think in the comics she no i don't know no okay she did carry the phoenix force one time but everyone does at some point Uh, Yeah, yeah, that I doesn't quite mean anything. But she's definitely not powered like going into secret invasions, right? When we saw her kill Electra, she turned into a scroll. She wasn't powered. Yeah, no, in any I don't way. think so. No. no. Yeah, so I didn't expect the supernatural aspect to it. Um, I'm I'm curious, but yeah, I didn't expect it. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for our spoiler-free reaction. Probably get you know it recorded in the next week or so. Let you guys know how we felt about the whole five episode season. Oh, I do yeah. like them dropping it at once, though, because binging it was a cool JD to binge it instead of waiting each week. At I was least very happy to binge it. And I will say that I understand why they released all five at once now. Oh, <laughs> OK. I get. Yeah. OK. Sheesh. No. Editing in the intro music after this. Yeah, we're rolling. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Why So Sidious, a nerd podcast. Today, we are bringing you another edition of Week in Geek, discussing all the latest news and rumors in Marvel, DC, and Star Wars. And of course, my co-hosts today are Jeremy Dar and David Cochran. And stay tuned for our second annual City Awards, all the biggest movies and actors of the year of 2023. And on the feed, we have 
farewell to the DCEU, how we felt about Zack Snyder's universe, saying goodbye, and a what if season two crossover episode with Galactic Core David was lucky enough to do. So check that out. Hmm. And of course, don't forget to follow us on social media at Why So Sidious Pod on Instagram, TikTok, X, YouTube. Subscribe, like, review. All right, let's get into the news. So I think the biggest news of the week came out yesterday. And that is The Mandalorian and Grogu are headed to the big screen. Directed by Jon Favreau and produced by Favreau, Kennedy, and Filoni. The Mandalorian and Grogu will go into production later this year. And John Favreau said, I have loved telling stories set in the rich world that George Lucas created. The prospect of bringing the Mandalorian and his apprentice Grogu to the big screen is extremely exciting. And our girl, Kathleen Kennedy, said, Jonathan Favreau. Oh, John Favreau. Wow. She's. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she didn't say that. I don't know why I said Jonathan. It's all and making Dave... sense now. And David Filoni have ushered into Star Wars two new and beloved characters, and this new story is a perfect fit for the big screen. She just wants some money. This is the way. So, how do you guys feel about this? Instead of getting Mando Season 4, we're getting a movie no, instead. No, no. Oh. News dropped today. We're getting both. Mando Season 4 is still in the works. I was going to ask. Wow. Yeah, so both are still set to come out. Damn. So I don't know how the hell that works. I don't know what comes first. Um, but I'm stoked on the movie. That's dope. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just I'm a little confused at how it's gonna roll out. So, um, but I'm excited for both. Yeah, I, huh. maybe maybe they do the movie and Mando season four is literally continuing to follow Bo Katan as the main character Mandalorian. You know, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I like doing. that. In the movie, I like I, that. Yeah, Jin. Yeah. Because they did they did wrap up season three that kind of way where. It, Mando and Grogu are going to go off and do their own thing in the end one. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And I also, I hope this isn't the Mandoverse movie as well. I hope the Mandoverse movie is still later down the road. Let's get a Mandalorian and Grogu kind of doing their own thing. And then season four plus this movie kind of lead up to the Mandoverse Avengers movie, you know. Let's yeah, draw it out. Tell a good story. Filoni is for sure supposed to direct that movie. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so, and that's, I think, his first movie, big screen directing, right? He he might have directed some Ahsoka, but I wonder if they want Favreau to, like, I want. I wonder if he wants to shadow Favreau at the director's position for a big screen Star Wars movie to for, prepare before himself he does it. for his movie yeah. while working with somebody who's developing the story with him, who has been developing the story with him. You know, that'd be a perfect little team up for him to get, like, the movie side of things down. So I just, that would be cool. You know, I really just wonder if it has been part of their plan for a while or if freaking Kathleen Kennedy got excited again and really needed to announce a movie and just went, went ahead with it. You know, no. I really hope, I really hope this isn't like the 30 other movies that we've heard about the past five years, but um, yeah. with Favreau directing, I mean, that's with, uh, with how rocky Star Wars has been the past few years, his name's attached to the stuff that's worked, right? Him and Filoni are your kind of trustworthy people that have been dishing out good stuff when Star Wars has kind of sucked lately. Um, so Favreau as director, totally down for that. Um, yeah, and I have, I have so many questions. I guess we got that answer. Season four is still happening. And then, yeah, Soka season two, this movie, like how's it going to lead up to this big movie? But Favreau, man, yeah. that's, that's, that's a win, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm, I am curious how it's going to translate as far as production value goes when you switch from being a series to a movie are they still going to continue to use the volume a lot or are we going to get more practical like really go all out and really get that higher movie I, I just i hope they do that rather than make kind of like a disney plus original movie production value rather than a theatrical movie value. so i really hope they lean into that and you know show that contrast that this is a this is the big screens you know let's, let's see what they can do you know what else I'm excited about as season one Mandalorian being my favorite Mandalorian season, I'm excited to just see Jin and Grogu doing Western stuff again, traveling the galaxy together, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Like the simplicity of that story in season one, just, I think it really benefited and this movie could do that, you know, yeah. and to see 
Jin back instead of Bo-Katan being the leading Mandalorian. Like, like she's fine, but I would much rather have Jin as the, like, season three was, I think, hurt because he was, you know, on the sidelines for that whole series, for that whole uh, season. So yeah. a movie about them specifically, big win, Favreau, big win. Um, and, it, and, you know, just him and Grogu traveling the galaxy. That sounds like a lot of fun. I don't think Pedro's signed on yet, though, right? I gotta say, it's Din, though. Jin's in Rogue One. Ah, ah. It didn't feel right, so, but I'm down off for the her to come. Oh, she's dead. Never mind. <laughs> she died. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'd be down to have her roll back in, too, though. But Yeah, so, what like, is the deal? times, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what is the deal with Pedro, though? Do we still need him? Like, we could just roll without him, really. I mean, I mean, I know hey, we need the voice, but Disney's basically got his soul signed over, anyways, right? They could probably just utilize yeah. his voice, regardless. We got Brendan and Wayne and uh, Latif Crowder, but he has to take his helmet off again, right? Or is, is that was a one time thing, never taking it off? Because I feel like he's kind of evolved from that. Yeah, the armor gave uh, Bo the pass, but she didn't give Din the pass. She told Bo she walks both worlds so she can take it off, but she didn't say mm-hmm. that about Din, so I don't know. That's weird. And there's a rumor saying John Favreau's The Mandalorian and Grogu movie and Dave Filoni's Mandalorian crossover could be part of a trilogy. Which would be hmm. even sicker, where we get one, two, and then the third That's one. A lot of Mando. Wait, say that again. So Filoni's movie and Favreau's movie, and they're talking about another one to make that a trilogy? Yeah, Dude, that would make sense. Like the climax, the climax of a very popular Mandalorian show. Like, do it in the proper Star Wars way with a trilogy, dude. Like, that's the yeah. best Star Wars. Yeah. Sitting in the freaking movie theater watching three different movies over the course of like four years. Like, that's the best way right. to do Star Wars. So, do the climax of your little Mandalorian Thrawn Ahsoka story with a trilogy. I'm all for it. Yeah, let's see that scroll too. Let's see another opening scroll. The Mandalorian scrolls aren't in Star Wars. Dude. Oh my. Damn it, JD. Seriously though, the, I, yeah, seriously, we want that scroll back. It's like I miss that scroll, dude. That's such a all right, that amps you up so much and sets you up for a cool story. Every time. feels good, feels right. Yeah. And we got news from this that Ahsoka season two is in development as well. They threw that in the article, yeah. So that is cool, which also would lead to you know the Avengers Mando crossover because Ahsoka is going to be in all three of those movies like you need the star power yeah and the jedi agree? power yeah and the jedi power you, oh, need, you need a strong jedi and like you know really cl- cl- close to the front lines uh close to the leading cast you need that jedi so the three release dates we have we have the ray movie coming out may 22nd 2026 then the next release date is december of 2026 and then we have december of 2027 so we'll see how, you know, because we have those two Mando movies plus the Dawn of the Jedi. Those are the three that are, you know, and, and Ray, but Ray's the first one to come out. So those, we'll see how that all works out. I'm sure it'll be one Mando, one Dawn of the Jedi, or who knows? Maybe they bust I it out. Know. I thought this movie was supposed to come out before Ray. I thought I read that somewhere. That's not the thing. Huh? Ray's coming out first for sure. I think so. I don't know, honestly. I don't count like anything in stone for them. Didn't they say they just started production on this movie? Or they're, they're I think they about said to? they're going to start this year, I believe, yeah. They're starting yeah. production in 2024. The Ray movie's pretty far along. I don't know if they've filmed yet, but... Oh, okay, so it has been. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know that. But Dave, did the director say anything of note lately? Yeah, she seems chill. Uh, things like it's about time a woman came to make a story in a galaxy far, far away. And but first off, I guess Deborah Chow and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard aren't women because they both have directed Star Wars projects. They have created stories from a, a galaxy far, far away. I don't know. It was just kind of weird the way or she Kathleen came across. Kennedy? Yeah, she's kind of been, you know, in the just work the president since the of Blue <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a slight in itself too. Like, we just want somebody who cares about the project and who cares about Star Wars. I don't care about your political background. I don't need to even hear that at the start of this or whatever your society. We just want to hear you talk about the Star Wars film you're going to make for us. So obviously, it ruffled a lot of feathers. Uh, some people going a little bit over the top 
than others with their reactions to it, but just a weird move. And I guess if it's intentional to grab headlines, then it was successful, but uh, I don't know. It wasn't a movie I was excited for anyways, so I don't know what I feel about it. I would I would try knowing your audience, because Star Wars audience <laughs> is like 79% male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that too. So... Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's just, it sucks. There's politics just fo- bleeding into movies and even sports and shit like that. It's, it really, really just puts a dark cloud over some of these things, dude. Just just make a good movie, please. Just make yeah, the best exactly. story, best movie, please. That's all we care. And about. I'm pretty sure Iger recently said like he's not really he's not for that what she's he's saying. He's not willy you know? nilly with that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, like, Sorry, no. like he said, you you're creatives, not activists, <laughs> yeah. is basically what he said, you know, like Yeah, well, I'm here sure he doesn't make, want that. You're here to make money and make people happy, not tell a message is basically what he said, you know. Right. Keep your messages at home. Oh. Oh, well, sorry, but about the movie that's getting released, I just thought one mm-hmm. more thing. The fact that this news came out like a, just a few months after Filoni gained that position of like creative, mm-hmm. he has this new creative control power thing going Director, on. Director, creative. It's like, like, yeah, he's like in charge of the creative direction of Star Wars. And this, this must have been his idea then. I mean, this is just a couple months after that. So right. it's his idea. It's probably for a good reason. Mm. Nice. You know? Yeah. Comforted. Yeah, he knows what he knows what the people like and what they want to see, and they want to see totally. Mando and Grogu on the big screen. Like it's simple, yeah. it's easy. Tell a good totally, story at the same time. He totally gets what the fans are looking for when they sit down to watch Star Wars. Like he prov- provides that <laughs> straight up. You know, he does. Well, let's talk about Star Wars in twenty twenty four because they could be back if we get all the things that they're teasing. So. In speculative order of how it could come out, Skeleton Crew, that should be releasing this year. And that's, you know, could tie in with Ahsoka and the Great Beyond and what was going on in the other galaxy. And then we have The Bad Batch, the final season, season three, ending that show. That could come around summertime. Mm. And then we have The Acolyte, eight episodes. That could come around fall after Bad Batch. And Tales of the Jedi, season two will also probably be coming after that. So we get four shows this year. I guess wow. Andor has been pushed to 2025, probably from the strikes and the delays. But right. getting Acolyte and Skeleton Crew along with two animated shows, I'll take it. And on top Huge. of that, we get Star Wars Outlaws coming late 2024, the video game. Really? So like, that's 2024. Yeah, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a good year. Dude, that's stacked. That uh, that's that's cool because we got a slow Marvel year. Obviously, we have one movie coming out for the right. MCU. Uh, for DC, we don't have a movie coming out, so we're very light on movies. And pro- well, well, we'll have some series dropping, but House yeah, of the that, Dragon. that's big. We'll get Star Wars, right, right, right. We got some, and well, I don't know what the hell's going on with Stranger Things. It's probably not twenty twenty four. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. All right, before we move on from Star Wars, let's talk about some more negative stuff. Um, Adam Driver was on the Rich Eisen show like last week oh. or so. I don't know how or why, but Saw that. basically, the quote he gives is pretty, pretty dooming. But uh, Driver says, "I had an overall arc in mind that J.J. Abrams wanted to do, which then changed. His idea was almost the opposite journey of Vader." where Vader starts the most confident, the most committed to the dark side, and by the last movie, he's the most vulnerable and weak. And he wanted to start at the opposite, where his character was the most confused and vulnerable, and by the end of the three movies, would be the most committed to the dark side. Imagine how sick that would have been. Like, we needed Kylo to be that badass villain in the last movie, not turning to the light side like... Ugh! So sorry for reading that, but I it would have been so sick. It would have been so much better. Like we don't, there's not uh, that story told that often for the one of the main characters. Like where by the end of it, they are just fully committed to the other side of it. Like not a redemption story that was thrown in that kind of scene, which is kind of weird though that JJ wrote that in and Rise of Skywalker if that was his initial plan, and then he kind of just bailed on it to spite Ryan Johnson at this point. I guess uh, I don't know. Because Duel of the Fates, oh, man, the original episode well, nine had 
Kylo as the villain for the whole right. movie. Right. So why did that get changed? Gee, Disney. You know. never know what kind of like creative pushes he needed in his second movie though. Like maybe certain things really needed to ha- happen to make that all make sense. Like right. I bet you a lot of that is just Ryan Johnson's fault for doing the same thing you're Raylo. saying pretty much going back on everything JJ Abrams did. So I mean he probably I god that just sucks man, but it sounds so sick. Um but but I mean yeah, he he probably needed to develop that more in the second movie for it to make sense for his conclusion, right? Like yeah, maybe so. But the fact that he did put that in his concept art and that was like the storyboard for Rise of Skywalker at the start still and then they switched it makes me think maybe Disney pushed against it because of the Raylo thing they wanted. True. Or, you know, I I don't know, but man, and the thing about that is that would have elevated Ray's story as well. If she really had to rise up and face, I mean, she faced the emperor. Yes, but that was more so forced. If she rose up and faced Kylo Ren, who was fully committed to the dark side at this point, like that would have been, that would have just been way more of a notch on a resume kind of deal like going up against that and overcoming yeah. kylo in that position with her dual blade blue lightsaber which was in the concept art too like that would have made her a way more epic character for me if that were to be her storyline so it kind of ruined a lot of things taking that out and dude star wars dna is their great villains from the first six episodes, mm-hmm. it's just great villains lead Star Wars. And this new trilogy went with like a Snoke that didn't work out. They went with the Kylo Ren, which they didn't commit to. And then they try, then they try to Hail Mary and inaudible to bring <laughs> the Emperor back because some, somehow he returns. If they just committed to Kylo and just, oh, that sounds so sick. If he would have been that cool of a villain, you know, that their legacy would still be, be a lot better than yeah. it is because... Yeah. Yeah. It lacked and a villain. You, the whole the whole trilogy lacked the villain. Yeah. Hux and yeah. Force Awakens and like, turns out to be a traitor. Yeah, like, that was ugh. stupid. Oh god! And you still could have and done I, all that stuff in the Last Jedi, where him and Ray start to bond, where they do have kind of a connection. Mm-hmm. Because, but then he turns he turns evil at the end of the Last Jedi, and mm-hmm. then in that final movie, Ray defeating him is like. You know, it's it it, it uh, destroys her. Like she doesn't want to do it, and that would be very an emotional ending to the movie where she's yes. doing what she has to, but doesn't want to. Yeah, it would have been great. So much better. Bummer. All right. Well, let's move on to Marvel. So it looks like Stephen Yen is out as Sentry in the Thunderbolts movie. I know you guys weren't super big on this casting just because of how the character is in the comics and how Steven is as an actor, you know, but doesn't totally mash up. Well, yeah, I mean, he would act it. I think he would act it fine. It's just and it's it's weird saying this in 2024, but I mean, Sentry is straight up blonde haired, blue eyed, like very like that's very much it, it would really throw you off to go full different, you know, black hair, fully different nationality, you know. I think it works with most characters and you could do it just fine, but Sentry's pretty noticeable for his blonde hair and his blue eyes. Like he's very, <laughs> very like that. Um, and I, What's you know, his name again? Bob. Ooh, it's Bob Reynolds. Yeah. Bob Reynolds. <laughs> My boy, Bobby. Bob. Yeah. So, I mean, is Steven Yoon's character going to be named Bob Reynolds? <laughs> That's, that sounds like a blonde haired, blue eyed guy to me, but um, <laughs> it, I, I, I have a lot of questions, you know, I wonder if Marvel, because Kevin Feige came in and switched a lot of stuff up. We know that. You know, he mm-hmm. came back, Iger's back, Feige has more creative control, just like the first few phases. Um, I wonder if he saw something weird about the Thunderbolt. Like, if, are they even using the Thunderbolts, is what I'm getting at. Sorry, not the Thunderbolts, Sentry. Are they even going to use Sentry anymore? Because, right. I mean, under this JPEG Marvel, I mean, that's kind of a weird, that seems like you're just pushing for a cool character in this Thunderbolts movie. And, Honestly, the Thunderbolts team can't hurt Sentry. Like, what is his role in this movie? Is he going to join the team? I don't know, because Yelena or fucking Red Guardian isn't going to go up against Sentry. Captain America, or uh, Bucky, you know, Ghost. Sentry is like a Superman. So I don't see him fitting into this movie. And I wonder if Steven Yeun just decided to drop out of it because Marvel's been sucking lately. The fans are so divisive. Like, they will tear you apart. 
mm-hmm. if you do a bad job on their character, if they don't really represent a character, like he'll get torn apart and he probably doesn't want any part of that. So, you know, I wonder yeah. if either Feige came in, changes stuff they're not using Sentry or Steven Yeun just didn't want the drama and he dropped out. Cause we don't know, like behind the scenes, we don't know if they got rid of him and they just said, yeah, just say it was your decision, you know, or if oh, he yeah. just like straight up right. pulled out, you know, but it's really weird. And I want to see Sentry, but I don't see how Sentry fits into a Thunderbolts movie. Yeah, I I could see that. Um, yeah, I I think it was the 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 good move on either part. I like Steven Yeun, but there's a psychotic aspect to Sentry as well, which is his other half, the Void. Um, that I don't know if he could hit that mark. I think um, I don't know, but it opens up a Void, and I'm just saying it now. Alexander Skarsgård, do it. We've seen him do that psychotic stuff in The Northmen. Um, we've seen him play normal almost innocent or unaware roles very, very well. Um, so he could easily hit both Stand. sides and he looks exactly like Bob Reynolds in the comics. I mean, with his long hair, I mean, uh, he totally, he, he looks exactly like him. So I say, bring him on. in. Yeah. Maybe Steven Yeun just dropped out. Cause it's like a death to 85% of superheroes careers after they're done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still though? Yeah. Uh, Tom Holland. How's he doing? Well, Outside I don't know if that was the Spider-Man thing. Robert Downey Jr. He had a Jr. whole thing about Besides how he gave up on Hollywood because he didn't Robert want to Downey play Jr. the role. Robert Downey Jr. pre-Oppenheimer? Yeah, but he did Oppenheimer after still. He did Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah Oppenheimer you can't say after. pre-Oppenheimer. He just, he just won the best. He just won a gold globe. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Uh, shit, that's funny. Daisy Ridley. But she didn't play a superhero. I mean, ha- well, I mean. Your first three, we've got to say, well, <laughs> <laughs> or the best Tom examples. Holland didn't do, but Tom that Holland's wasn't, made like four movies, and they. But all that's because he came out and he said, "I just, I, I don't fit in with the Hollywood thing. I don't like the way a lot of this stuff works." And his last role showed him getting railed from behind, and he caught a ton of crap for that. And oh, he's just totally God. dipped out of I the didn't entire know Hollywood scene. I don't think it's because he can't land roles, but I think it's just. I don't. I think Tom's just an innocent kid, and Hollywood's <laughs> a little too rough for that boy. <laughs> So, Dave, we got some uh, canon updates. Yeah. So, with Echo comes new canonized shows. Uh, We got a teaser that showed the background of Kingpin, which were all scenes from Daredevil. Uh, and a couple other clips from the Daredevil seasons, which canonized the show Daredevil. Um, It was something they never fully came out and said. They never said, yes, Netflix series are canon to the MCU. They always sidestepped it, said it's kind of in its own deal, but they never, ever confirmed it. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was confirmed to not be canon, even though it literally had scenes from the Winter Soldier in it and intertwined with multiple of the MCU movies. It's not canon. So a lot of people were saying, well, Daredevil's canon because they mentioned the Battle of New York and the fact was it was not canon yet well disney plus has finally updated uh the timeline for the mcu the sacred timeline for the mcu and every netflix series is now on that uh and some of their studio execs have came out and said yes it is canon so even the not so great shows like iron fist uh appears to be canon now in the mcu uh but that's exciting for the fact of punisher and daredevil for the most part jessica jones is cool too yeah. Um, whoops, because what about Mahershala Ali? I mean, how are you going to explain this oh, variant, ooh. this Blade variant being a villain for a second in Queens? Good call. Or whatever, like a little gangster. That's funny. Whoops. Ah, good no. call. Yeah, Cottonmouth, Luke Cage. Yeah. I don't know yeah, what they're going to do with that, that one. Which that show would have been a lot better if you stuck around, I'll just say that. Right. I was really digging him yeah. in that role. Man. Yeah. I mean, they done, they did Gemma Chan oddly with uh, Captain Marvel. She was a Kree soldier, and then she was uh, Cersei in the Eternals. So she took on a major oh, really? role after that. That yeah, she was one of the one of Captain Marvel's what? Kree teammates what? in the first half of the movie. Oh, throughout the whole movie, actually, she fights her in the really? end. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh, Crazy. Like that's Cersei. Yeah. Cersei. Yeah. No way. Okay. Weird. Not very noticeable because of her Kree get up, huh? Right. Yeah. It's like uh Tom and Lan Tom and Lannister from Game of Thrones, bro. He plays he plays a Lannister in the earlier season and that's who the the North Lord kills and then Rob has to kill that guy because he killed the Lannister uh prisoners. It's Tommen. Oh so Tommen, really? Like, dies oh, twice oh, in wow. that show. Yeah. What? 
I didn't wow. know that. Yeah. That's all funny. Yeah. yeah. Random fact. <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> <That> is. <laughs> With the, uh, so the NFL playoffs are starting this weekend, and it looks like Niner. we can expect a Deadpool 3 teaser during the yes. Super Bowl. Nice. Which game? Cool. Wait, the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah, the Super oh. Bowl. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant this Which weekend, Super Bowl, like the playoff games. Oh, yeah. Like, no, oh, no, this I weekend. Was... <clears throat> okay. Well, that's dope. That's sick. Yeah. I cannot wait. Right? Even though it could just be a comedic thing, like not even a trailer, just like Ryan Reynolds <sighs> as Deadpool doing a fourth wall break. Kind of <laughs> who knows with a teaser of Deadpool, but that's regardless. That's hope. If oh, it's yeah. if it's Super Bowl, they usually go big. I hope they do something. Yeah. Crazy. yeah, paying a lot, so might as well. And we also to move to DC real quick. Some Supergirl testing. Yeah, so we got word that James Gunn will, in fact, be testing uh, for the Supergirl role. Uh, Supergirl, Girl of Tomorrow, Woman of Tomorrow. Sorry, I forget what the the title of it is. What Woman of Tomorrow is that? Comic, Woman of yeah. Tomorrow. Okay, so that's what it's going off of. Um, and the three main names that came out were Amelia Jones, Meg Donnelly, um, and Millie Alcock. So Millie Alcock, more notably, is from House of the Dragon. Uh, she was just Rhaenyra, the younger Rhaenyra Targaryen. She was pretty good. I thought. Bro, I thought. I think we all really liked her. Actually, um, I loved Meg, young Rhaenyra. Yeah. yeah, she was good, right? Um, and Meg Donnelly voiced. Supergirl and the Crisis on Infinite Earths animated movie that just came out. She's the voice of Supergirl, uh, but she looks like she could. She looks like she could fit the role. Still, apparently, she's an actress too, other than voice acting. So that'd be kind of a, a no brainer there. Um, I don't know who Amelia Jones is, but I could see Millie Alcock doing it. Maybe I don't know. What do you guys think? I like her. Yeah, young. Is like, that young Raina? Young or, Rainier. Or, or, or <laughs> yeah, Rainier. Hundred percent. She's got. She's like spunky. I can see her as a powerful Kryptonian. Sure. Straight up. I don't know. Have you guys ever seen the show 1883? Probably not. It's not like a massive That's the show. Yellowstone prequel. Yes, oh, it is, huh? Yes. No. All right. Well, it's really good. I'll just, it's really, really good series. Uh, it's only one season, like eight episodes, but super good. But the main character, uh, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are the two main characters, and they have a daughter, and she's played by Isabel May. And she would freaking kill this role. She was incredible. She was the reason why the show was so good. Like, in, just an incredible performance. Um, and she's the right age, has the look. Um, so that'd be my vote if they were going to fan cast her. Or if they were going to cast her. But interesting. They're starting to expand into more more casting for different projects. It's, it's all happening. It's all happening. Well, let me take it back for a sec, though. Did you okay. say Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are the star characters yes. in a show? Aren't and they country actually country singers? Both country singers. Dude, they actually were. <laughs> I was like blown away at how, how good they were in the show. The, the show is great. And hmm. they, yeah, they both killed it. Um, yeah, it played husband weird. and wife. What? Very weird, but they were great. Tim yeah. McGraw has. Wasn't Tim McGraw in the Friday Night Lights movie? Yes. He does act a little bit. Yeah, wow. he was an actor. He's the mm-hmm. dad, the super dickhead who was like taping the son's hands to the ball because he kept fumbling in the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Tape the real, hands real, real nice guy. Punching. Real nice guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. No, daddy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any news topics? Just Steven Yoon. Yeah, not a, not a lot going okay. on now. Uh, Dave, was there a box office update you were going to give us? Or should we tease it? Um, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Um, we got a quick box office update. Um, so it is not over. We have one movie left. Dave's a cheater. The numbers waiting all year. The numbers have it's funny too because that was the deadline we put was March of 2024 is the latest the movie can come out and do and got (laughs) delayed till March of 2024. Um, I think, I think we need to put it, I think we need to make it January for the next draft. (laughs) That's well, all right. I, I would have had a relax. There's no Shazam. no no rough. COVID or That's delays true. anymore. That's why we did it. I think yeah. because of the strike, right? Yeah, That's true. Or COVID, or whatever yeah. it was. But um, yeah, no we COVID. started off. Yeah. Was it okay? We started off with me up by like 1.2 billion after the first few weeks, and ever since that point that we sent out that update, I've just been dropping and dropping and dropping. So 
We have final totals for JD and Caleb as they are officially done. And oh. I have one movie left. So if you guys would like to hear, we have Caleb at 3139322535 So $3.139 billion for Caleb. And that, I believe, will be finishing because who was the last movie you had? Mission, no, Oppenheimer. And it's, it's Count's done. It came back, though, and made a couple, a little bit more. They it, put it, it back did. IMAX. It shot back up. I know. It kind of <laughs> cheated there. Um, it went over. Didn't it make a billion? Or okay, like so that's. $50 million? That's, dollars? Yes. That's, I thought I heard it made over a billion. That's crazy. But the total is $952 million that I have. And so I'll double that's check insane. to make sure there wasn't a late IMAX ad that they didn't put in. But, uh, yeah, it, it shot up. Like, doubled. Um so three point one three nine billion for Caleb and Jeremy getting some big pushes from Barbie there, and Aquaman didn't do too bad either. Not Aquaman. Three point two eight billion dollars gotcha. surpassed oh, Caleb's gotcha. count. You better, in the you better last re-release count. that shit again. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, but JD isn't over technically. Aquaman's still numbers will still be coming in a little bit for Aquaman so his will go up a little bit more uh, and I am sitting at 2.826 billion so I am you, you don't even need the next movie four, no, dude, I do. I'm million. 440 million short of you mm-hmm. right now and you still got Aquaman rolling so oh. pretty much I need Dune to hit half uh, a billion which isn't guaranteed these which days. Will. I don't know. Things, things are. It's it due. should. I mean, it should. But yeah, because it, it's not a like lot a of mediocre people didn't like the first franchise. One. Yeah, no, you're really? right. Really? Yeah, I I'm surprised by how many people didn't. I loved it, but a lot of people I talked to were like, "That was so boring and slow." It's like, damn. Okay, the box. I guess office I can see it. Did really well. Yeah. It only got like four hundred and something, oh. but it was during peak. COVID. I thought it was a. It was like yeah. one of the it's first crazy movies how- to come out. It's crazy how close it was at the end, though. Cause Dude, I, feel I couldn't like believe it. Was back, it. Like a back and forth. Like some of our movies did really good. Some of our movies fucking shit the bed. Yeah. No, I couldn't believe it. It it, super, it got down super close. So yeah. So we'll I see. Mean, Stay Aquaman tuned. came out like three weeks after the draft, and it was like, oh, well, I lost. <laughs> you know? No, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, man. That's yeah, awesome. that's, that's yeah. how Aquaman made me feel, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amen. Yeah, so there you have it. Good, that's cool that it's close. I uh, yeah, right. I hope Dune's amazing, but now I don't. So, <laughs> damn. <laughs> oh, no, no, this is the big one. It's going to be a big war, way more action packed. So I think this one will. I think this one will do better than Dune one. It should for sure. But we'll see. All right, should we wrap it up with a real quick thoughts on Rebel Moon? We threw it at the end because, oh, yeah. honestly, we weren't too impressed by this movie. Obviously, this is Zack Snyder's Star Wars script that got denied. They put it on Netflix. And, you know, it had some cool action scenes. Pretty cool CGI. That was solid. I didn't have a problem with the CGI at all. And But it was just basic characters all around. The main character didn't really go anywhere. She was kind of just like the same badass the whole time, you know, kicking ass. No one really stopped her. And it seemed like um, a lot of the good stuff happened in her backstory exposition scene. Like, that seemed really cool where she's a part of the, like, Empire Academy. She falls in love. He dies. She's, like, going through all these wars and stuff. It was a ton of exposition. That's, like, classic um, Zack Snyder. He loves backstory exposition scenes. Just dumping it all over us. And the villain was (laughs) cosplaying... (laughs) The villain was cosplaying as Christopher Waltz from Inglorious Bastards. Like the opening scene was a straight up reenactment of Inglorious Bastards. So overall, not that great of a movie. What did you guys think? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm gonna I don't I'm, to say I was just gonna say, I'll throw this out real quick because I gotta dip out of here. Um so I'll say my parting words on the movie. Yeah, I heard a lot of bad stuff, like three out of tens and whatnot. I wouldn't put it at a three out of ten. I'd put it at like a six. Um, but yeah, very generic. Um, 
the most excited I was about it was that it was supposed to be a rated R Star Wars film. It ended up being PG-13 when they Wasn't released it. And they, they plan to release the rated R version soon, which is another thing that just pisses me off. Zack Snyder's director's cut stuff just immediately out of the gate. Like, well, it's a different movie. Wait for that one. Make a movie the first time around. Just do it the right way. Uh, but I ranted on that last episode in What If, so you can hear my rant there. But all in all, I just, yeah, it was just very generic and... I, there just wasn't anything to it. It was just empty. Like JD said, the dialogue felt super unnatural, like NPC video game dialogue. Like the whole time, it was oddly, AI. it was oddly awkward. Like in a way I've never really Off seen putting. all the way through a movie from start to finish. Like almost everybody's dialogue all was the same weird, awkward, unnatural way. It was just, I don't know. It was weird. So there were some cool shots. There were some cool action scenes. But it was just nothing to it. Um, but I'm sick in the head, so I'll probably watch part two because I have to see something through. Uh, but yeah, we'll yeah too. pretty burnt. Pretty burnt. Disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, you guys covered it. I got nothing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's just they, they kept going to new places, and it was like in the middle of a story, and then we have no idea what's going on. So, and, and, and we're meeting these characters and it's like halfway through these characters story and they're like in the middle of some drama and we're showing up on a new planet and it's like what is going on it's almost yeah. like this might seem kind of sacrilege but Zack Snyder is like George Lucas in a way where he's a really good creative but he's not the best writer yeah exactly he, you know what I mean like he can think of great cool stuff but when he tries to put pen to paper it doesn't end up as well like you that's know, exactly what I was thinking i was going to compare him to the way george martin like Zack snyder wanted to create a game of thrones universe without sitting down and writing a story <clears throat> you know so he yeah. just boom here's your universe i don't really have a story but here's what it looks like and here's some action and it wasn't yeah. that organic raw sitting down and writing a great story with great characters that's that should that's probably what George Martin started with or the great stories. That's how it starts. You sit down and write the story. And then that kind of the universe creates around that. He did it the yeah. opposite. Here's your, you, I want this universe and I want this kind of action. No story, right. no character, nothing like that. It's like, yeah. So right. empty. Yeah. I'd probably give it like a five and a half out of 10. Where would you put it at? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking like, like five. About- Four, yeah, five. It's like, yeah, it's just, right. I didn't care enough to even like. I don't care. It could, it could be a two. It could be a five. <laughs> sure. Will you watch part two? Yeah, yeah, I will. I think, I think it could be better. I think part two could be better, but this one was not that great, so can't get much lower. Yeah. And one more thing about um, the director's cut. So apparently, I read that the studio actually did that. It wasn't his idea. It's not like he just wants to make a movie and then a director's cut. Justice League, Batman vs Superman. It's not like that. I guess the studio, like their plan, I guess, was to get up on that hype because when the Batman vs. Superman Ultimate thing came out, <laughs> everyone loved it. When, ja- when Zack Snyder's Justice League came out, that's everyone hilarious. loved it. So they're like, all right, Zack it's- Snyder, like director cuts. <laughs> like, that's like a thing <laughs> yeah. now. So yeah. apparently they He's like had to make, yeah, they had to make the movie, but then apparently they said, like, or in the middle of it or something, at some point they just said, okay, now like, go back into the studio and kind of do whatever you want. Even though we have this movie, just go like, go play around in the studio and just make what you think is really cool. And apparently they had him do that so they could release a different cut. So they could like hop on this supposed Snyder cut thing, which that's not why anything is cool. It's not because there's a new version of something, (laughs) a different version of something. It's just because, I mean, yeah, sure. They happen to be better. The Batman versus Superman, the Justice League thing, they happen to be better, but it's not people. People don't get excited because there is a Snyder cut. They're just they those are just better movies. So I think their right. planning on this thing was a big mistake and that was kind of Jeez. like the Morbin time thing where they're really getting the wrong idea of certain things online. But yeah, apparently that and was the studio's idea. But it's Netflix. It's not like it was a theatrical release. Like just put the movie on Netflix. He put a four hour Irish movie on there. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm sure the part two part two releases in April, which is cool. So you don't have to wait very long. Yeah. And then we'll probably get the theatrical release later this year. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this edition of Week in Geek. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, JD, for staying to the end. Dave had to <laughs> bounce out of here quick, had a quick, you know, business meeting going on. You never know what's going on out there. All right. With Lex and, and of Luther. course, yes. 
And stay tuned for our coverage of Echo, all five episodes, and the cities. And we love you. And we ha- have a good night out there. Goodbye. Love you. Can you end this?